Uh, this is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago as usual. And boy, do I have a nugget for you today. We've got a Karen who rolls into court, not just any court. Oh, no. No, we're talking about the 36th District Court. And not just the 36th District Court, but this Karen decides to go do her thing in front of Lenise Bryant. It's absolutely delicious. Let's do it. And great morning. All right. Okay. I am Judge Lenise Bryant. Welcome to the 36th District Court. You are at the 36th District Court. You are at 36th District Court. You are at 36th District Court. Where are we, Judge? You are at 36th District Court. (laughs) All right, so I'm ready on uh, Langford. This is case number 224464401, the people of the state of Michigan versus Christel, middle name. Says, T- Ma'am, don't interrupt me. My name correctly. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't interrupt me. And if you're going to be rude, it's not going to work out good for you. So you can do it the easy way or the hard way. Okay. Middle name T-E-I-A is on the docket. Last name Langford. <clears throat> Defendant is charged with one count of assault or assault and battery. Today is the date set for a final pretrial conference. Uh, appearance, please, Ms. Ritter. For the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. And ma'am, now it is appropriate for you to correct me with your name. But let me say this. Don't don't be rude to me today. I've not been rude to you. And I'm I'm just I'm asking you not to be rude to me. Okay. your name for the record, please. Unmute yourself, please. Christine Langford. And what's your middle name, Miss Langford? Tia. Thank you. Today is the day set for final pretrial conference, and I understand, Ms. Langford, that you wish to represent yourself. Is that what you want to do? Yes, that's what we discussed the last pretrial Don't, don't do that, ma'am. I, ha- I hear hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases. Ma'am? Just answer my question for today. I did today, actually, are ma'am? you representing yourself? Wow. I, I I just can't believe this woman already. She, she's interrupting the judge. She started out rude, and then she's interrupting the judge while she's talking. Unbelievable. How do you wish to proceed? Yes, ma'am. I am. Okay. And so how do you want to proceed? Today is the date set for the final pretrial conference. Okay, well, I would like to request a trial date and also a detailed explanation regarding the reasons why Brianna has not been charged with violating MCL 750.411A and uh, MCL 750.478A. And I'm also requesting permission to leave the country from August 26th through August 29th for a business meeting. Uh, you don't request uh, uh, why someone was or wasn't charged with something. Of course, it's all nonsense. She's just trying to to throw mud. But y- y- you know, if if you did have that legitimate question, the judge isn't the person who does it. It's, it just shows a complete and total lack of understanding of law on every level. Like like so many of these other people, most people actually are, you know, don't know much about the law, but they they have enough self-awareness to know that. And, and that's why they get an attorney or, or ask for help or at least are, are, are not obnoxious in their assertions. They're sort of they're sort of nice about it. She's asking something that be, betrays complete lack of knowledge and, and is and is doing it with attitude. It, it's something to behold. Today is the day set for a final pretrial conference. <clears throat> the court is going to continue a not guilty plea on behalf of Ms. Langford. <laughs> and I will set the matter or place the matter on. Um, oops. I will place the matter on the jury trial tract. This is a 2022 
case, Ms. Muldrow, what is the, or Ms. Ritter, what is the uh, uh, date of the alleged offense? April 18, 2022, Your Honor. I, I should say at this point, you see uh, some of the captions and stuff that popped up. Those are from Jess Karras. I took this uh, from her site. I'll put links to that in the d description below. Big shout out to her. Go over there, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. All right. Then the court will place this matter on the jury trial track and set another final pretrial conference. The court will set the final pretrial conference for what's the date I gave earlier. Ms. Muldrow, what's that mark? Oh, here it is. Um, for March the 6th, 2023 at 9-16, that indicates to the court that the matter needs a jury trial date. Uh, Ms. Ritter, has any discovery been exchanged? No, Your Honor. I don't have any contact information for Ms. Langford. Lord, do I believe uh, discovery was requested. Can I speak? You may. I actually disagree because I had a phone conversation with Ms. Ritter back in June. I also confirmed that she received the information that I forwarded to Detective Evans via email uh, during that conversation as well. So again, Your Honor, I don't have any email address from Ms. Langford to send over this Okay. So in the phone conversation, Ms. Langford, did you share your email address with Ms. Ritter? I believe so, but I also did submit a discovery request online, which was denied, which also included my email address. This is good. Well, I can't imagine who you sent a discovery request to online because I'm the only person who could order discovery in this case, and I don't receive uh, online discovery requests. So Would you nonetheless, like to send this? My apologies. Go ahead. Would you uh, like me to? Send I'm sorry. Go ahead. If you could please put your email address in the chat to Miss uh, Ritter. Do you know how to utilize the chat? Yes, ma'am. Put your email address in the chat to Miss Ritter. Miss Ritter. I can't because the chat is disabled, Your Honor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me enable it. Yeah. Whoops. Would you also like for me to copy and paste the link where I submitted the request to and uh, also forward her the email that it was denied as well? No, because again, I don't know who did not, what can deny discovery. It is mine only to, uh, to um, order. I don't know what link you would send it to. It's not applicable to misdemeanor cases. So whatever link you sent it to, that's probably why they denied it because it's not applicable to misdemeanor cases. But I'm ordering discovery. Ms. Ritter is going to send the discovery um, to the email address that you just provided. Uh, Karen, you're over your head. You're not gonna just explain to Judge Bryant how discovery works in misdemeanor case in her room. OK, it's it's fine if you don't know that most people wouldn't know that. Hell, I don't know that I don't handle criminal cases and I don't handle them in Michigan. So I would not know the discovery procedure off the top of my head, although I would figure it out. But I sure wouldn't not knowing that go and try to talk down to a judge about it. That, that, that's where your problem is. That discovery must be um, submitted to Miss Langford uh, by October the 7th. I ask a question, please. Sure. Is the information that Attorney Ritter is forwarding me, is that going to be any different than the information that I have in the FOIA request, which includes the all? Uh, Ma'am, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't I'm not, know. Ma'am. Ma okay, so can I address it to Another question, which just, just displays a complete and total misunderstanding of law. Again, which is fine. Most people don't know this, but she does it with attitude. You know, she's asking the judge, is, is it, you know, I did a FOIA request. Is her discovery going to be the same? I don't know. I'm not the prosecutor. I don't know what you got in your FOIA request. You're asking me to compare two sets of documents, neither of which I've seen, nor should I see at this stage. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it boggles the mind. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Don't make Oscar beg. It's rude. No, no. Okay. It's no. okay for you to be, it's okay for you to. Ma'am, that's not how it works. So here's what we're going to do. If you're going to represent yourself. 
Okay, I kind of talked to her a little bit. She she was trying to ask her could she could she talk to uh, Christina Ritter uh, right now directly. The answer is no, not no, but hell no. It, it's that's the answer in every court in the United States. When you're before the court, you address the court, not the other parties. It's just how it's done. Again, it's fine if you don't know the rules, but don't come in with attitude, acting like you know everything when you know nothing. And you clearly are. Then it is incumbent upon you to to know how court works, um, and 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 the applicable things that go on in the courtroom. And just because you're re- just because you're representing yourself. Um, there, it, it, it's not going to mean that I am going to de- Th- that head shaking would put me in jail. Th- that's contempt. If an attorney does that, I, I'm, I'm just saying part from how my courtroom is run. So the answer to your question is no, it is not appropriate to ask the, the prosecutor what discovery she's sending you on my record. And then when she sends it, you all can decide if it's the same thing and if there's something else that needs to be sent. Okay, so with respect to the discovery, it is be, it is to be submitted by October the 7th. And then we will return for a final pretrial conference on March the 6th at 9.16. And at that time, I should be able to give a jury trial date. Anything further for the record on behalf of the people? Nothing from the people, Judge. Thank you. Anything further on behalf of the defense? Yes, ma'am. My concerns regarding permission to leave the state have not been addressed. Okay. Um, the court. Or country. Yes. My apologies. All right. And the court does grant permission um, to travel. All right. Anything further? No, Judge. All right, then we are all set until um, March the 6th at 9.16. Have a great day and stay safe. Well, there you have it. Oh, it was deliciously awful. I I enjoyed every minute of that. When you see a when you see a Karen going off like that, you're always thinking. You know what I'd like? I'd like to see her in front of Judge Bryant. And there we just saw it. It was a thing of beauty. Bryant kept uh, Judge Bryant kept her composure. Uh, she was okay. She granted her leave to go out of the country. I don't know what the underlying charge is. It doesn't really matter. It's a misdemeanor, so it can't be that big of a deal. I don't see why you'd preclude somebody. I, I mean, it depends on the facts of the case. I guess it depends on the stuff. But I, generally speaking, I would think on a misdemeanor, they're, they're going to let you go. They, she probably got. Uh, like some standard pretrial thing like don't leave the state of Michigan um, on like a PR bond when she was arraigned or something like that for, for whatever this charge is and and if you ask for that on a misdemeanor I think that's going to be granted in most circumstances if you have some some reason for it but the the rest of it was just an epic failure and uh, it, it was it was truly fun to watch here a lot of talk we like to have fun with uh, silly stuff that happens in court and every once in a while and completely by accident i assure you you might learn something thanks for watching <laughs>